the Joe Rogan experience. So yeah. you're you're a hundred percent in on ghosts. I am. Now tell me about why you're a hundred percent in on Sasquatch because that that one is a that's p more puzzling to me. Uh, well, just uh, that it's it's. Uh, again, uh, Gabriel Reese's uh, story was quite convincing. Jeff Meldrum's research was quite I convincing. I knew I would have talked to her about yeah. it. Yeah, they were Jeff a Meldrum told me he cut his finger off. He said, if you could find out if Sasquatch is real, he'd take a pinky off. I said, if you could cut your finger off to know that Sasquatch is real, would you do it? He goes, which finger? I'm like, your pinky. Mm -hmm. like, well, yes. he's got casts. He's got hair. Uh, point to, Jamie? Footprint he's uh, he uh, Jeff Meldrum, right M-E-L-D-R-U-M. It, it used to be. It's in my room. He's a, right he's a, you know, he's a, paleontological scientist at the University right. of South Dakota. But he can also be a silly man. Sometimes you study things, you memorize them, you pass a test, but you're still silly. Well, but, uh, but you talked to him. Did you think, did you feel he was, uh, you know? I ain't uh, giving up my finger for nobody, man. <laughs> yeah, okay. I'm not giving up a finger to find out if Sasquatch is real. That's crazy. No. Well, <laughs> yeah, he's pretty devoted to it. these, man. But um, it's been, you know, Yeti, the yak and Yeti yeah. story, you mm -hmm. know, the Yeti story. And, and just the, around the world, uh, just the um, the sightings that, that people have had. Um, um, right, but people I, I, see I read bears. A book. Well, there was a book called uh, Diary of an Alaska Housewife. It was about a woman. She wrote it. She uh, left uh, in the 70s to move from Kansas to Alaska, and her husband worked on the pipeline. And she tells a story one afternoon when she was at her, you know, uh, her window in the kitchen, and she went outside into the garden. So she felt, saw something, went outside, and she smelt this really strong, strong, musky, musky odor. And she saw this big, huge shape at the corner of her garden kind of disappear into the woods. And I don't know, bear, grizzly, mm. who knows? Sure. Could be. Yeah. How about, how, where are you on chupacabra? Not at all. I think it's nonsense. I think it's uh, coyotes with mange. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Pretty convinced. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, they've they've captured coyotes with mange that look like demons. How about Mothman? That's a neat story. Poor shit. Listen, let's go back to Bigfoot. Let's not. You get don't believe too crazy. those kids? Eh? No, I think they're full of shit. Let's go back the to Mothman the Mothman prophecies. The the bridge collapsing. Save the whole, it. Yeah, yeah. Save it. I mean, I'm kids not. I'm, I'm not going to sit here and argue uh, on behalf of Mothman. <laughs> well, let's but go to it's Bigfoot. an intriguing story because when you have multiple witnesses, like. As far as the UFO, I will go back to Goodfoot, but the, the aerial encounter, the, the school children at the aerial uh, school in, in Zimbabwe in the, uh, in the 90s. Do you know the story? John no. Mack was working on it. No. Uh, uh, two beings landed in two different craft, and they encou encountered these school children all in elementary school, and now they've come back, and they're interviewing them now in their adult time. And it's amazing how their stories synchronize. Why would all of them conspire to make something up? Well, okay, we're dealing with two different things. And okay. the Mothman, there were four really credible kids there that, that said uh, they saw it. You know. the, the UFO thing is less preposterous than anything because we are currently sending spaceships into orbit. We are currently sending probes to Mars. We, we are, we're involved, deeply involved in the exploration of our solar system, at least with these robots and drones and things that we can control that that all, all that makes a hundred percent sense to me bigfoot is interesting to me because there was a creature called gigantopithecus it was an enormous primate that mm -hmm. was a uh, without a doubt lived it, it's a real thing it was a bipedal hominid. They think it was between eight and perhaps even ten feet tall. It was a huge ape-like creature, and it went extinct. And the reason why they found it is because there was an apothecary shop. I believe it was in the 1920s. An anthropologist found a tooth in this apothecary shop in China. He talked to the people. Where did you find this? He recognized it as a primate tooth. They brought him to the site where they found it, and then they started finding other pieces. They found bones that, re that seemed to indicate that this thing was bipedal. And this is something that's accepted in the paleontological paleontological record. This is like when anthropologists look mm -hmm. at the history of primates. When they look at the, they, they think this is a widely accepted real animal. So why Bigfoot why wouldn't it was real? Why well so why did it? Why do you say that it couldn't have survived and uh, and, and beyond it, extinction and, and, and exist today in some form. It we, could we, have, yeah, we but there's no, there's no evidence that's compelling, just like there's the no evidence that fake. They think they, woolly the, mammoth. Pretty much the film. 
Yeah. It's fake. The Patterson footage? Yeah, yeah that's they, horseshit. They say it's fake. Here's the thing. But, if it looks like a man <coughs> in a suit, no mm-hmm. animal looks like a man in a suit. There's not a fucking single kangaroo out there that can looks imitate. like a yeah. person yeah. in a kangaroo suit. I just, I just think Gabriel's story, Meldrum's research... Uh, the book that I read of the woman. What was, uh, what was Gabriella uh, Reese's story? Well, she was in the camping up there in one of those northern states, Washington. And I believe she has video footage of I'm the thing shaking, shaking the, she was uh, shaking the, uh, shaking the, shaking the motor home that they were in. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. She was quite excited to tell me the story and and uh, quite vivid about it. She said that it was it was Could scary. Be. It was look, scary. If there was a small population, look, look, try finding a wolverine. Yeah, you know, try finding or a or a or a super one. one of these super sloths in the in the South American jungle now. These big sloths. That yeah, you they can't think find. they're real. There's one. There's one scientist that has literally risked his reputation and he's his whole fucking credibility is in demise because he decided that he was going to spend his life looking for the giant sloth. Mm-hmm. And these uh, indigenous people have pointed him in the right direction, and they've recognized that there's. You know, there's dung that seems to be sloth mm-hmm. dung that they've found, and they're trying to point him towards where these things are. And uh, the giant sloth was a real creature. But there's no real evidence that the giant sloth is currently alive. But the, the thing is, the vast wilderness of the Amazon rainforest is so impenetrable. It would be like trying to walk across the earth and make uh, a good audit of all the creatures that are on it. You're and, not going to run into them. And, you know, we many species are dying on this planet right now for various reasons, but there are many that are being discovered we never even knew about before. And, you know, the northwestern forests are pretty impenetrable, too. The, yes. Uh, the Washington That's what forests. makes it interesting, is that the, the location yeah. Yeah. of the, the area where if the thing crossed the Bering Land Bridge and it came into the United States, mm-hmm. that's exactly where it would be. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It would be in that Pacific Northwest because that's, yep. you know, as you walk down from Alaska to We've Canada. heard the stories of loggers going in there and seeing them or sensing them or, mm-hmm. you know, because they're being driven out of their environment. Uh, there's yeah. some hostile acts against logging companies that they think uh, have been perpetrated by, uh, by you know, those, uh, yeah. by the, the Sasquatch. Yeah. Nobody wants to believe in Bigfoot more uh, than me. Nobody. I worked, I worked up in, uh, in the Northwest Territories. I was a flex track uh, assistant mechanic on tundra crawlers and I was a road surveyor. When I was a kid, I uh, worked for the Department of Public Works, and we were up there in, along the Nahani River, the Headless River, where explorers would go in and they, they'd find their heads and then never come back. That kind of they find all their kind, heads. Yeah, they find yeah. Bigfoot heads. No, 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 just the, oh, uh, the human heads. Human heads. The Headless Valley, the Headless River, Nahani Ooh. River, N A H A N N I. But when I went up there and was with the survey people, there had been guys who'd been up there, you know, uh, you know, years before me, and they and they said that uh, Sasquatch was a common thing that was spoken about among the natives and among the survey crews up there. Did you ever see the Bobcat Goldthwait movie, Willow Creek? No. Outstanding oh. movie. Oh, Bobcat yeah. uh, Goldthwait made a horror movie about Bigfoot. Oh. Bobcat Goldthwait, the comedian, made an excellent horror I gotta movie. I got to catch that. Uh, it's Willow really Creek. good. Oh, yeah, my yeah, God. Yeah. That's, it's like, like, like Fire in the Sky. I thought uh-huh. it was a good depiction. You would love yeah. it. Oh, I will You would get love it. it. It's about a bunch of people that go up there to try to replicate the Patterson Bigfoot film sort of as a lark. Oh. They go up there for fun, and they encounter a real Sasquatch. So Willow Creek, it's called? Yes. It's wow. really good. Yeah. I love that. I yeah. love that. That's Bobcat great. Bobcat is a 100% believer. Uh-huh. He uh-huh. believes. He and I have had some ridiculous conversations about it. <laughs> Be nice to go and, and and go into the intense woods up there and maybe camp for a week and yeah. You know. Look, man, to, to see something like that, a bipedal hominid that has avoided detection mm-hmm. for hundreds, if not thousands, of years, would be amazing. Yeah, but the they, thing they about spoke the Native about- Americans is Native Americans had more than a hundred different names between all the various tribes. A hundred different names for Sasquatch. Is, I really, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oma was mm-hmm. one of them. Mm-hmm. You know that you saw that American Werewolf in London thing that, mm-hmm. that is uh, the the guy who created that. What it, Pat? Uh, 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 Rob Baker? No, no, that's Rick Baker. Rick Baker, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, Pat McGee, who's the special effects guy, created the one for me. But Rick Baker designed it originally. But he made a Pat McGee made a movie called Oma. What was it called? Oma Primal Scream. See if you can. But it's basically a horror movie mm-hmm. about Sasquatch, and you know it's. It's incredibly compelling to people. The idea legend- that this is enormous primate that's been avoiding detection, living in the forest. Legends and- uh, among the indigenous people say that they, they sometimes grab children and take them. I think yeah. that's because it used to be a real thing. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> that's what I think. I think that's because if you, if 
we all agree and scientists agree that this Gigantopithecus was a real thing. If that is the case, then it's entirely possible that one point at one point in time, human beings were in direct contact with them on the regular basis, and those stories have been passed down through generation after mm -hmm, generation. Mm -hmm. The real question is, are they still here? Mm -hmm. Because the people that are telling you these stories, like when we talk about uh, people in North America, it's widely accepted that most Native Americans, they share a lot of genetics with people from Siberia. Because Siberia is what's close mm -hmm. to the Bering Land Bridge. Yep. They come down. These people eventually, many, 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 many thousands of years migrated into America. Mm -hmm. and they have So those are people that would have been in contact 100,000, whatever years ago. It, what they don't know. They know that these teeth that they found from Gigantopithecus indicate that it, it, the at least 100,000 years ago, they were alive. Mm -hmm. Does that mean they were alive 50,000 years ago? Very possibly. Mm -hmm. Fit, like a Homo floresiensis, you know, that the hobbit person that yeah. they found? Yeah. This tiny little thing on the, right, right. On the Flores Island? Mm -hmm. That thing, they didn't even know that was real until the 2000s, and that thing existed as recently as, I think it was thirteen or 14,000 years ago, which is incredibly recent. Yeah. And this is a completely new discovery that people found, that there was a totally different mm -hmm. species of human being that was very small with a, a chimp-sized brain, but it was human. It used tools, and it yeah. lived amongst humans. Yeah. So... This thing, if they know it lived 100,000 years ago, it could have easily lived 50. It might have lived 20. So it lived 20,000 years ago. Maybe it's it was, here with us today. We, ah, we just no got to go and though. find. We yeah, but there's, there's no evidence of mammoths either. Yeah. Right? We know they were real, but there's no... Like if someone said, I saw a mammoth, you'd be like, where? Do you have a picture? No, 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 but mm -hmm. I sensed it. You're mm -hmm. like, get the fuck out of here with your sensing mammoths. I think if you did... If you put and mount, mounted a horrible avatar-style military... Uh, uh, let's say, incursion into some of the deep woods of Northwest America. You might, you might get traces, but How what, many a, you think what a horrible are? thing that would be to, to be do. An excellent thing. We get footage. I know, but then you're destroying. There's Oma. And... That's uh, Pat McGee's version of. Uh, oh, it's great. Uh, yeah, looks it's like kind of like Groot and. Uh, yeah. Wow, that's just a weird picture. No, that's beautiful. Wow. Um, yeah, wow. It's called. Primal rage. Uh, neat, neat. Yeah, wow. that. Look at the um, the animatronics. Yeah, you see the that face right there, Jamie. Yeah, look at that. That's, uh, when's uh, that coming out, or is it? It's, been, a, it's out? been out. Okay. It's been out for quite a while. Well, primal rage he, and, and he Willow it Creek. I'm um, get it. I'm Willow get Creek it. is really interesting because Willow Creek is like Blair Witch style. Yeah, it's all like found footage, like yeah. the whole thing. Like the okay, here we are. We're in the woods. You know, like that oh, kind of love, shit. Love that. You'd love like that. it. It's yeah. really Bobcat's a genius. Is he? He did a great job with it. The, he's. It's really good. It's well, like compelling. It. It's exciting. And even if I don't believe in Bigfoot I, or don't don't believe it's currently alive, just I know too many people that are in the woods all the time. Mm -hmm. I know too many people that are hunters that are in the woods. That haven't and they seen. spend weeks and weeks in the woods, and none of them have seen shit. Yeah. They yeah. see bears walking on two feet, though. That's really normal. Yeah, yeah. And when you're in thick, dense forest, bears walking on two feet, and you see them in the, the dusk. Sure. Like, oh, my God, I saw a Bigfoot. Yeah. I'm convinced. Yeah. And then you really are convinced, mm -hmm. so then you go back and tell everybody. Yeah. I think, you know, basically just uh, each individual has to make their own minds up about all of this stuff. And if you want to believe, it's just like your religion. You know, I, I believe in mediumship. I believe in the, the afterlife I, of, of our consciousness. And that's kind of my religion. And who's to say, why should I be disputed on that? You know, I'm um, glad you believe. I'm glad there's people. I'm glad there's like, intelligent people that believe in silly shit. Well, you know, look, <laughs> uh, you know, many people believe in the Virgin Mary, because Catholics, and, and that's yeah. quite a myth. And, and many believe in the angel Moroni and the gold yeah. plates and the magic spectacles. And, and many believe in Zenu, you know, the Scientologist uh, belief. So yeah. I'm not going to go and, and say, hey, oh, I dispute your belief. There were no golden spectacles or there were no golden. No, there was no Zenu. No, there was no Virgin Mary. No, I respect people's belief. And they realize that's what you believe and that's what helps you. Good for and, you. You know, and I, I would never dispute that. And likewise, I, I want to be just respected for my belief in spiritualism and, and mediumship. And I so, think there's a, there's a religion and skepticism as well. I think there's this, there's a, a And tendency. I respect that. Go for yeah. it. Yeah. But there's, you know what I'm saying? That there's a tendency to just try to dismiss everything. Mm-hmm. As being, as like, well, believe the official story of every single thing. You know why that's good? Because that empirical view will be able to sort out 
the fake stuff, the hoax stuff from the real stuff. If people of real scientific uh, minds and, and real, you know, inquirists there go into it, uh, that's what's going to that's what's going to sort out uh, what's real and what isn't. <laughs>